and welcome to the fourth episode of Watercolor Wednesdays. So I'm going to be talking about using reference images and the painting that I've done this week is a good example of what can happen when you don't use quality references as the overall result hasn't turned out quite as successfully as the previous ones have. Of course it depends how heavily you're relying on a reference to what you need from it. Some you might be using for poses, textures, shapes, and others you might want to make a painting based on that thing instead of one that incorporates the thing. And the reference photo I used here was not a great one. I'll put it on the screen so you can see what exactly I mean. And the camera picked up the reflection off the glass. It's a really grainy image so you can't see much detail. It's quite difficult to distinguish some of the forms from each other like the tentacles. And I also printed out this image so that I could use it by my side when I was painting, which meant that it had even less detail than the digital format because my printer darkens images and because of the scale being quite a lot smaller. So because of the lack of detail, I could observe the overall painting ended up far less detailed, it was less textured, and I was a lot less confident about what it was that I should have been including in my painting. So trying to focus less on what I don't like about the painting that I've done this week is what lesson I've learned. So for next time, if I want to make a realistic painting, I'll be far better off using a decent reference photo as I'm not great at painting from my imagination. Again, that's another thing that I like to work on in the future, but it's not what this series is about. I've been using my own reference images that I've taken with my camera from an aquarium trip. It's a good quality camera, it's not a professional photographer's camera, but it works great for high quality resolution. And there's loads of different modes and settings I can either manually change or just set it to automatic. I've had it for quite a few years now and I know my way around it, so I thought I'd be fine at the aquarium and there'd be no reason to do any extra research for that. Turns out I haven't had quite as much experience taking pictures with glass reflections and fast moving objects like small fish. So a lot of my photos turned out to be unusable because of the movement causing blurs and the light reflection off the glass. I took enough photos that I still have a bulk of usable images. It's just a shame that I had to delete quite a lot of them due to not thinking to practice with different settings before taking my trip there. Obviously not every artist is heavily reliant on reference images. In a lot of cases, the more cartoony or stylized an artwork is, then the less likely the artist is to have been relying on references. In fact, with those styles, it's pretty common for them to have relied on references so that they can then work for their imagination. And in that sense, their mind is the reference that they're using because they practice doing something like a pose or figure so often. And it's pretty common to need references, and there's no shame in admitting that. Some prefer to glance at references to put a particular aspect of them into a drawing or painting. Others like to adapt and change it. And some are more about recreating an object or thing by drawing or painting it. With what I'm doing, I'm aiming to recreate the fish by painting them. So to do that in a realistic style, which is what I'm after, even though realistic isn't inherently better, it's just a personal preference that I have. As I haven't painted a great deal of fish, I don't have that reference library of sorts in my mind. So I'm having to rely quite heavily on the reference photos I have. And like I've said, it's not always a bad thing, but there can be limitations. This week is a very good example of the kind of limitations that the reference photo itself brings, because it means in order for it to look as realistic as I'd want it to, I'd have to invent the details and textures. And the reason for me taking my own reference photos was to avoid having to do that, because I know it's definitely not a strength of mine, and I'd rather focus on getting to grips with watercolor first before introducing having to paint more based on my imagination. That's pretty much the bulk of what I wanted to say about the topic of reference images. Being completely honest, I was tempted to turn over the page and do another painting to talk about this week because I'm not feeling like this painting matches up to the quality of my previous weeks. But I talked about in the intro video how this series is about documenting my learning process instead of a series showcasing paintings that are all great. And even though I'm not satisfied with this painting, I've still learned a lot this week and I think I just need to accept that the lessons along the way are more important than what the finished piece looks like. You'll also notice this week that I tried stretching out the painting to cover a double page in the sketchbook. It was actually quite nice to change it up, it allowed the scale to get larger and it felt more like a landscape paranormal, so I'll be trying this again in the future. 
I also had a background that wasn't just filled with white space like the previous ones have been. It was quite interesting how much it changed the mood and added a whole lot more atmosphere. All the brown mixed in with the blue really gave a sense of depth and playing around with backgrounds like that was pretty fun. So next week I'll be including more of the background and we'll be selecting what reference photo I use a lot more carefully. Hope you enjoy it and see you guys next time. Bye!